Be still and know that I am God, says the Lord of heaven and earth. As we join in worship this day, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to know God's love, to know God's mercy, and to know God's welcome for us all here this day. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Bonaire Presbyterian Church. My name is Alex Krieger. I'm the pastor at Bonaire and it's wonderful to worship with you all on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning in August. Thank you so much for worshiping with us, whether you are in person here in the sanctuary or joining us online. We're so great to have you here. If you are worshiping with us online, this is our first Sunday of the month, so we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper, communion, and to join with us, all you need to have with you is a cup of juice or wine and bread with you, and uh, you, we would love for you to be able to fully join in with worship and communion with us. There's some things going on in the life of our church that I'd like to share. First is that at 3 p.m. today, the, um, and let me get their name absolutely right, is the Richmond Chamber Players will be having their first of three summer concerts here in our sanctuary. Uh, the Richmond Chamber Players are uh, a core group of the Richmond Symphony, I believe, and uh, fantastic. They've been practicing here all week. I can tell you, incredibly talented and gifted. And uh, they're every Sunday at 3 p.m. this Sunday, next Sunday, and the third Sunday in August, they will be doing concerts here. The, each concert is $30 a person or 80 for the full series. Um, and we invite you, if you're able to please join us. The, each, what pieces they are doing is listed on their website and was sent out this week. Uh, but it's an excellent, excellent group. If you're looking for somewhere to be cool this afternoon, to hear great music, please come here and join us for that. I just want to mention that we have um, still, I believe, some final tickets for the Faith Night at the Diamond on Thursday, August 18th. And there's fireworks after that. The game begins at 6.30 p.m. And if you're interested in that, Judy and Pat Clayton uh, are who to reach out for. Uh, along with that, I want to mention that uh, after worship, there's fair trade coffee and chocolate for sale in the Narthex area that goes to, to really uh, help support the great work of people all over the world who are looking for sustainable work. It's also really, really great chocolate and coffee if you're looking for that. And then finally, this Saturday, 
uh, we are, like all the schools around us, our preschool is getting ready for getting back to school. And a big step for that is getting our building and the, the play areas, and especially outside areas, ready for that. And one of the big areas we need to get ready is the preschool courtyard. It's the courtyard between the preschool classrooms and the fellowship hall and kitchen. And often each year it's been one, maybe two people to do that. And we would love to, to offer some help with that. So this Saturday at 8 a.m., anyone, while it's still nice and cool, anyone who would like to come out, most of it's going to be weeding, would like to come out for an hour or two, we would love to have you and get that uh, preschool courtyard nice and clean and ready. And if you have any questions, Barbara Gregory, our new preschool director, would love to connect with you, I know, much more if you have questions about that. Otherwise, come with some work gloves, some water, and we'll see you Saturday at 8 a.m. With all of that, so, oh, one final thing I definitely wanted to mention was that uh, along with our middle schoolers going to Massanetta Springs in June, our high schoolers going to Montreat two weeks ago, our, we had a core group of our elementary school students do a week last week at Camp Hanover, and I just heard from one of the parents this morning that it was an amazing week for them, that every day they came home from, from the camp singing songs of praise to God and just loving it. They've been sharing it with all their friends, and I think we have a very, very excited group for going to camp again next year. So I just, I really want to thank you all as the church for making that possible and knowing that you are definitely shaping the lives of our young people through these camp experiences. With all of that said, I invite us to stand and join together in our morning's call to worship. We gather today to worship the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who equips us. One. With joyful hearts, let us worship God.
Let us go to God in confession. God of unfailing love, it is often hard to remain faithful. You ask us to share our wealth with those in need, yet we hoard our possessions and guard our wealth. You call us to rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, and plead for the widow. Yet our pursuits are often self-serving, ignoring those in need of our care. Forgive us and cleanse us, O oh God. Move us to be the people of justice and propel us on the path of love. Amen. The prayer continues in silence. Friends, I say it every week, but hear it with fresh ears this day once more. There is far more grace in God than there will ever be sin within us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
Please be seated. In a minute, we will have a blessing for Faye, but before that, we have some children who are very excited and ready for a time for young disciples. So we're not going to make them wait as they're coming from the child care room. So we're going to invite them forward, and Connor has a message for any young disciples in age or in heart this day. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. Please feel free to grab a space that's comfortable. I'm going to sit right here. You can sit wherever you would like. Hello, hello. Oh, it's so good to see everyone. Hello. I have a question for you. I want you to play pretend with me. Can we do that just for a couple seconds? Can we pretend? Okay. I want you to pretend that this is your favorite toy. Of all your toys, this is your favorite. You just pretend for me. But I also want you to pretend that this is the only toy that you have. You only have one, and it is your favorite. You've had it for so long, and you really love it. You don't want to go anywhere without it. And if I asked you to borrow it, and you were so kind as to say, yes, Connor, you can borrow it. And you gave it to me, and I lost it. Would you be upset with me? Maybe a little frustrated? Mm. Let's play pretend again. This time, this is your favorite toy, but you also have a hundred other toys. And you love them all equally. You have a hundred toys. And if I said, could I borrow one? And you might think, Connor, I know what you did last time. You lost my favorite toy. But I have a hundred toys. So I think I'll let you borrow this one again. So you let me borrow your toy, and you get to play with your 99, and I get to play with one, and this one becomes my favorite toy, and I only have one, and you have 99. I think this story is fun because I think we can all relate to it because we have favorite toys, right? But when it comes to things that we get from God, like love and friends and community, we have so much. And we get to share it with other people because we still have enough, even when we give a little bit away to other people. Say, Pastor Alex, I'm going to give you some of God's love, and you get to have that one because I have a whole basket full yeah. of God's love still. What do you guys think? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Can you guys help me share God's love? Because you all have so much, and you need to remember that. And even when it feels like you just have one, that one is enough. Can we pray together? You can repeat after me, okay? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your love. Allow us to share it with the world. Allow us to share it with the world. And making sure we always have enough. And making sure we always have enough. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much. That you can go back to the nursery or stay in your seats, wherever is best for Bible. you. Thank you. I really want to know where Connor got that Bible Buddy toy. That's very cool. Uh, besides that, at this time, I want to invite Lorna Enzalone forward and Faye Begbedeer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You are preaching today, Faye. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Um, I'm Lorna Anselin, the moderator of staff relations, and I just came on to, to, as moderator in June. Um, but we had a huge 
empty space, we all know, when Mr. Henley left, and we were lucky to have Janet as our interim organist and choir director, but our bells weren't ringing. And Marta Rowe, who was the current moderator of staff relations, goes, oh, why don't we ask Faye? And those of you that know Faye know that she likes to think about it, but she was called to be the interim bell director. And for that, we are so thankful that she shared her gifts of music and love of Christ with all of us. Thank you. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, Faye, during this time of transition, you were a huge gift to us, along with the whole bell choir. That's one of the beautiful gifts of the music of this church. It was wonderful to continue having the bells ringing, not just for us who get to hear it, but for those who love to play. Your gift of leadership meant so much. And I know not all of you knew Faye, Faye led it during this time. And as well that I know, especially at the beginning, Faye, you would be coming in on Saturdays to set everything up and pull everything out. And doing so much. And please know that your work, your care, your ministry definitely was noticed and mattered. So I'd like to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for that ministry today. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for Faye, for her calling to serve our church in so many ways, and especially in these past few months, leading our bell choir. We pray at this time that she's able to receive some rest and renewal for herself, but that she knows how much her gifts, her work, her ministry truly connected with so many. We are so, so grateful for our Bell Choir ministry and pray that you continue to bless it and lead it going forward and continue to surround it with caring, wonderful people like Faye. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Faye. At this time, I invite Elaine forward to lead us in our first scripture reading. Please bow your hearts as I read our prayer for illumination. Creator God, maker of stars and seashores, reveal your word to us this day in which all things were made. Redeemer God, caller of disciples, light our lamps this day, dress us for action, and open the doors of our hearts and minds. Sustainer God, sender of the Holy Spirit, Renew in us the faith of our ancestors that we might claim it as our own in covenant with you. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. Hear the Lord's word, you leaders of Sodom. Listen to our God's teaching, people of Gomorrah. What should I think about all your sacrifices, says the Lord? I'm fed up with entirely burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I don't want the blood of bulls, lambs, and goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from you, this trampling of my temple's courts? Stop bringing worthless offerings. Your incense repulses me. New moon, Sabbath, and the calling of an assembly, I can't stand the wickedness with celebration. I hate your new moons and your festivals. They've become a burden that I'm tired of bearing. When you extend your hands, I'll hide my eyes from you. Even when you pray for a long time, I won't listen. Your hands are stained with blood. Wash, be clean, remove your ugly deeds from my sight. Put an end to such evil. Learn to do good. 
Seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Sorry, I see I said that part at the end too early, but at least I got it in. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine, for that reading. And we can definitely give thanks to God more than once. That is more than okay here in worship. Our first reading from Isaiah was on God wanting something more than show and sacrifice and faith that was just something for people to see, but faith that looked like action, that looked like giving, looked like justice and love. And the same is definitely true in Jesus' words this day, which come from Luke 12, verses 32 through 40. Let's listen for the word of the Lord this day. Jesus said, Don't be afraid, little flock, because your Father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Make for yourselves wallets that don't wear out, a treasure in heaven that never runs out. No thief comes near there and no moth destroys. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be too. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps lit. Be like people waiting for their master to come home from a wedding celebration who can immediately open the door for him when he arrives and knocks on the door. Happy are those servants whom the master finds waiting upon when he arrives. And I assure you that when he arrives, he will dress himself to serve, seat them at the table as honored guests, and wait on them. Happy are those whom he finds alert, even if he comes at midnight or just before dawn. But know this, if the homeowner had known what time the thief was coming, he wouldn't have allowed his home to be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the human one is coming at a time when you don't expect him. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder, what do you do when you know that family or friends or loved ones are coming for a visit. What do you like to do in the days leading up to that? Anyone? Clean house. What else? Any, any other things that you do? Cooking for them. Wow. I need to come visit you, Marty. Yeah. Any other things that you like to do for people when they come? Take a shower. <laughs> I, I, will, I will say for those who are online that Henry Jaycox is also sitting in the far back today. <laughs> those are all actually great things to do. To clean the house, to make meals, to get clean, to just make ourselves as welcoming and ready for people as possible. I know when we are expecting family or friends to come and stay with us, one thing if, that we like to do is, is first get the house clean. And I will say that my wife Hannah does much more of that work than I do, getting it really deep clean. I know one thing I often do is make a list of things that we need to get. A big part of it's food, and the food's a really great part. When you come to stay, I feel like I need to have stuff that people will want for breakfast, for snacks, for drinks, for coffee, for everything to just feel at home and and always to feel like there's enough there. I know lately, though, one thing I've also started doing when I know people are coming to visit is I really notice the things that I wish to improve around our house, especially then. It seems like it's okay when it's just us, but when others are visiting, it's like, oh, we might need to get a new couch, or we might need to get new sheets or towels. We might need to fix up the downstairs more. I don't know if, is anyone else when people are coming to visit feel like, ah, oh, I wish things were improved or looked better for them? Uh, does anyone else ever feel that way? Yeah. And we feel like that's what they're going to really care about. Coming to visit us is how our house looks and how everything is for them, and we want to have the best comforts. And a lot of that comes from a great place of hospitality and welcome. But it also comes out of maybe a fear of us not being enough. 
not having enough. Maybe especially our sense that our value comes from how we show off to others and how we look. And it's not just in our homes either. I think that's often how we view a lot of our, of our lives is do we look like we're enough to those that we're interacting with and welcoming and working with? And it's even sometimes here in the church we want to make sure not only that we have comfortable seats for everyone, a welcoming presence, but do we look like we are good enough for you coming through these doors? Do we have all the fine trappings? Do we have everything ready? And especially we might even wonder, do we have and look good enough for Jesus? When Jesus comes, are we going to be appearing good enough and clean enough and ready enough for Jesus? And so, for the last 2,000 years, one thing the church has often tried to do is look as great as it can for Jesus. We often try to build the most beautiful sanctuaries, get the most fine linens and trappings, and get the best when the pastors choose to wear the robes, robes and, and everything else, thinking, well, we need to put our best for Jesus because he's going to care exactly how we look and seem. But Jesus tells us something very different in our passage for today. Our passage for today, Jesus says that the human one, the Son of Man in some other translations, often and we think that refers to Jesus as he was God coming to take on human flesh, that Jesus is the human one. Jesus is the Son of Man. And Jesus says the Son of Man, the human one, is coming to be among you. Maybe once 2,000 years ago, and we long for again for Jesus to come and bring us what we need to heal us, to overcome death and sin, to make all things right, to create a new heaven and new earth where light and love and mercy and community always are shared fully. Jesus says, when, when I come, I want you to be ready. I want you to be aware. And immediately we might think, well, we need to have the fine trappings. We need to go out and buy everything. We need to get the things that Jesus might need. But Jesus tells us something different. He says, don't go and buy things. Don't worry about having the right trappings. Instead, what I want you to do is sell your possessions and give to those in need. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Last week, coming back from Montreat, we talked about the desire and longing to talk about things that had been on our minds, our hearts, things we wondered about. And you all had shared, both at this service and Worship in the Woods, really great responses, things that, honestly, we need to talk about in worship and in Christian education and in mission and in all that we're doing here in the church. You gave fantastic responses, and I'm so grateful for you. One of them that surprised me, I actually got from two or three of you, was that you wanted to talk more about what it would look like when Jesus comes again, and specifically what we need to do to be ready for when Jesus comes again. Those are great, great questions, and today we're very lucky. But that's exactly what the lectionary is. I did not plan it out that way, but that's exactly what we have. Is Jesus saying, this is what it will look like when the Son of Man comes, and this is how we can be ready. For a lot of the church's history, we thought getting ready looks like two ways. One, we thought that we need to get ready for Jesus coming again by scaring people into faith. By saying, Jesus is coming again. You are not ready. You need to be afraid and get everything in order. And there are some moments that we need to maybe check and reflect on our lives. We need some urgency. I know I need that from time to time. But I also don't believe that faith lasts very long in fear. The fear drives us away from community, from love, from God, from the things that bring us life. And Jesus, even in our passage today, starts out by saying, do not be afraid. Earlier, he says, do not worry. So the first step is definitely not to live in constant fear or worry, or even be that our main message to others. Faith comes 
maybe from an invitation to reflect on our lives, but then I think deep faith, long-lasting faith, really comes from people knowing God's love, seeing an invitation and welcome, and especially seeing Christ's love and grace at work in others. The second thing that the church often has done to get ready for Jesus is let's show off the best. As we mentioned earlier, build the biggest buildings, have the greatest ornaments, have great music and world-famous sermons. If we just do that, then Jesus will be happy. And some of those things are really great that we need. I need to come every week and have a space that feels like a, a place to set apart and to be in worship and to be fully in community with you all. I know I'm filled each Sunday by our wonderful music and readings and prayer and time together. But that's not actually what Jesus longs to see most of all. When Jesus comes again, he says to us what he longs to see most of all out of everything is to see us loving and sharing and giving and working for justice and community for one another. It's echoed in our first reading from Isaiah for today as people are doing these great sacrifices and shows and saying, look how faithful we are. We're doing these big ceremonies and worship services and everything. And God says back, that's not what I want. That's not what I long for. You can have all of that. Keep it. What I want you to do is serve one another and love one another and give to those in need and practice justice and truly live as I've called you to live. That's what I long to see, most of all. And so to get ready for Jesus coming again, we don't need to do what we often feel like we need to do when guests are coming, and that is run out and buy all the items and clean the house and make everything. We don't need more. We live in a world that often tells us we need more of everything. But Jesus today invites us to actually have less to sell some of what we don't need. I don't know about you, but I always have items that I have that I always think, well, I'll get back to that I never, ever will. I'm sure none of you have a bin or maybe a full room in your house full of stuff that you're like, you know, maybe in five or ten years we might just use it again for this one special day. Raise your hand if you have any bin like that. Yeah, we all have that, and we all have that not just in terms of items, but maybe as well that we've added more and kept stuff in terms of how we use our time or our love or our energy or how we're, we're spending the gifts that we have and things that we don't need, things that we don't actually long for or have, have a longing for or use for. And so Jesus invites us to this day to make space, to get rid of those, to clear them out, to sell them if we can. And then Jesus says, after clearing those things, what I really long for is to see you love and share and give to others. When Jesus comes back, he doesn't need a red carpet rolled out right in this main aisle. He doesn't need the flowers adorning everywhere. He doesn't even need our most beautiful of music or greatest of sermons or any of that. What Jesus wants to see is us giving to those in need, of those taking care of those who are hurting, of us sitting and visiting and praying for those who are alone, of us being community and welcome to those who have not felt like they've belonged anywhere else. What Jesus longs for us to see, what Jesus wants us to do to get ready for his coming is to practice love, and justice, and care for one another. So this day, as we long for Jesus coming again, let's be transformed and changed, not by adding more, not by saying, well, what is it that we need to show off and look our best? But let us first consider, what are the things we can get rid of? What are the things we don't need as much anymore? And how can we give and share and use them to serve our neighbors, to love one another, to put people first, because that is where Christ's love is. Let's pray. 
Holy One of heaven and earth, we thank you so much that everything that we have is a gift from you. The earth and all that is in it truly belongs to the Lord and that you allow us to use it and share in it. Help us to remember that. Help us to see all the gifts we have as truly that as gifts. And help us not to cling or to hoard or to hold on, but to share and to give and to love freely. Lord, guide us and transform us as your people who are awaiting your coming kingdom. Help us not to put that waiting into show or to holding tightly, but into letting go and to knowing fully your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. One of the ways that you all have helped so much and given so much and trusted so much is in giving to this church and especially to the endowment of this church to allow great ministries to happen that serve us in this church to serve our families and children and especially to serve our neighbors. And to share more about that right now is Alan Sestak. Good morning. Uh, it's that time of the year again that our uh, BAPC Endowment Fund is accepting grant applications until September 30th. The funds may be used for mission and outreach opportunities, new or expanded programs, or capital improvements. We have more information in their out outreach. Thank you for your generous support in the past, and we hope you continue to support us in the future. Applications for this, the grants are in the workroom endowment box, or if you need one, in case there's empty or something, uh, let me know and I'll get one to you. Um, please return these request forms back into the endowment box no later than September 30th. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alan, and the entire endowment committee. And Alan, where, where are the forms found? Yep, if, you're, if you are interested or know some ways that we as a church can be of service, of love, of welcome of, through our ministries, or maybe something new, please look in that, fill that out, talk to me, talk to, talk to me or Alan or endowment, and we would love to see, and it's such a huge gift to our church. At this time, as we give of our offering, as we give of our time, of our service, of our prayers, and of our monetary gifts, know that our giving is truly a gift of praise to God, and that God receives it, and that God will guide it and steward its use to serve and love the world.
<laughs> Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the many gifts that you have given us. We ask at this time that you humbly receive our offering back to you. We ask that you guide it and steward it and use it for the work of your kingdom. Help us to know your love and your light this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, this is the table of Jesus Christ. It's not my table, it's not Bonaire's table, it's not even a Presbyterian table. This is a table that belongs to Jesus our Savior. And Jesus invites all those who long for new life, who long for forgiveness and grace, who long for community and love with God and with neighbor to come to this table. And know Christ's presence and love meets us here this day. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, for you made us, and before us you made the world we inhabit, and before the world you made the eternal home in which through Christ we all have a place. All that is spectacular, all that is plain have their origin in you. All that is lovely, all who are loving point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world, we know the universe beyond our kin, we particularly praise you, whom eternity cannot contain, for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus for his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our harmless generosities, for this disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fearless dying, his rising to life, breathing forgiveness. We praise you and worship him. Here, too, our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit, who even yet, even now, confronts us with your claims and attracts us to your goodness. And therefore, we gladly join our voices together in the prayer of the church on heaven and on earth, saying, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus met with disciples in an upper room, his friends, and he wanted to share a meal with them. He wanted to offer them gifts and not have it be the other way. And so, around a table, Jesus took a gift of life, a gift of welcome, a gift of love, bread. He gave thanks to God for it. He blessed it, and then he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body and it's broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of a brand new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. So whenever we come to this table and eat from this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again to make all things new. Friends, these are the gifts of God given freely to all people made in God's image. So come to this table and receive. At this time, I want to invite our two elders forward and that they will be staying at the front and we invite you 
to come and receive from the, from the basket. On one side, on the bigger side, is juice with bread, and on the other, is the smaller is wine with bread. At this time, please come and receive. of Christ is broken for you. The body of Christ is broken for you, Sandy. The body of Christ is broken for you. Take and eat. The cup of salvation is poured out for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that here you have fed us and met us with your love, your grace, your welcome and invitation. We ask as we go out this day fed by you that we may be strengthened for the work of love, of community, of justice, of seeing our neighbors as you see them and loving them as you love them. Help us to not go out as the same people, but to be transformed through the work of your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
every once in a while, I would like to invite us to do something, and that is to look out. You all always face this way, and I get this beautiful view all through worship of our great back window. I want to invite you to look out there. I want you to first see the abundance that's out there, the blue sky, the green leaves, this incredible world that God has given to us so much for free, and to know that there is more than enough. As we go out this day, may we see that world, may we see all that God has given us, and may we see ways of sharing it on, of passing it to one another, of giving to those who are neighbors in our community, and in so doing, proclaim Christ's love. May we do that, preparing for Christ's return by loving and sharing and working for our greater world. Go out this day knowing that the love of Christ, the the forgiveness of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit journey with you this day and each and every day. Amen.